What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What's good? We're back. Jay Wayne's drinking some sort of... I don't even know what that is. What are you drinking, Jay Wayne? That looks like... This is uh well it doesn't it doesn't look like it should cuz uh the whipped cream has uh seeped into the beer. It's beer in the key of lime. It's a key lime pie beer and you sprinkle a little whipped cream on top. It's pretty I don't think delicious. You sprinkle, I don't think you sprinkle whipped cream. I think you I think you Sorry, spray. you sprinkle the graham crackers on after you <sighs> the whipped cream on. Yeah. And uh it's a new revelry beer from the hold. I was doing a little product photo shoot for it earlier and once you're done, you get to drink the beer. So Cheers to everybody out there. It's pretty delicious. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Out there. Casey's frozen. We lost Casey. I thought you upgraded to the gig, Case. I thought you got the, 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 the fiber. I, I did. All, all of a sudden, my internet, I was just up at the top, was just like, it wasn't, it was just going up and down like it was looking for Wi Fi. I don't know what happened there. All right, well, I already did my part of the intro, so we can't cut it. Let's keep rolling. <laughs> Big Co, we got the whole tripod back. Big Co, we're here to talk about your lines. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Yeah, tough day. Tough day to see Stafford go. Um, but let's be honest, the Lions let me down years and years ago. It just uh, wasn't going to get any better. When um, I was looking into the to, to for some research for this show, I was like, damn, the Lions have sucked for so long. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. It's bad. Um, I I dropped out there for a second and lost you. Did you do a whip it when you got the whip <laughs> read? Sorry. Sorry for not pulling my mouth away from the mic and laughing that hard. I did not do a whip it, but right. I got I to gotta get a few more beers out of it, and then I'm going to hit that whip it. Get the womps. Once you do the whip it, you can't use the whipped cream anymore. I mean, you, st- you can still use it, it's I just think. Like, it's just like... Pours out. There's no more. You can't, the, you can't you know. be. You can't be doing like fish parking lot whippets. But I mean, you can get a whole. <laughs> I mean, who's not doing the whole thing? Fish <laughs> taking part of a whippet. whippet. <laughs> but yeah, oh, we are man. here to mourn the loss of the lions and uh, celebrate the gain of the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Even though I was really excited because I did think that the uh, the Niners were going to pull off a Sure. A couple of twos, couple of threes and get Stafford. And not then, enough. Not only did that not happen, he went to the fucking Rams, which was just a <laughs> double whammy. It's kicking the dick. Which, you know, I I really only hate the Seahawks. I don't hate the Rams. I don't, I don't really hate the Cardinals very much, but like I, I really hate the Seahawks. So at least maybe Stafford will keep the Seahawks from winning anything. <laughs> Good uh, point. Good way to look at it. Um, yeah. We, we got is... the Rams number. So maybe with Stafford, it's a different game, but we've owned... We've owned yeah, the they got a new number. They say who, who is. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, new number. Yeah, who new number? Who this? You ain't got our number anymore. We got Stafford now. Um, yeah. So the so, so the trade in question here is the Lions obviously uh, trade get trade for Jared Goff, get a twenty twenty first third, get a twenty twenty second first, and a twenty twenty third first. Um. So two firsts and of, a third. Lots of action over there, and obviously the Rams get Stafford. Yep. Which well, side I mean, do you want to start on first? Do you want to start on your Lions side first, Big Co? Yeah, I, let's do that just because obviously you started off saying we're more, more than a loss of Stafford. The the Lions just floundered around there for a couple of years with the coaching change. He brought in Patricia. He thought he was going to come in there, boss some people around like Belichick from day one with no street cred. And uh, it just it was just horrible. It's been horrible for a long time. It's crazy to say that we wish we had Jim Caldwell back. Um, but this At least is you really, were making the playoffs. Yeah, this so is a really, as, as crazy as it sounds, this is a good trade for the direction that the Lions are heading in. It's a really good trade for the Lions. Um, you don't lose Stafford and get better, but they're not trying to get better tomorrow. They're trying to get better in a, a year or three. That's again, it goes into con- combination with being able to take on golf's contract because it's, they're not going to go out and spend big money in free agency. They're they're not looking for any of that stuff right now because they're they're bad. They've been bad for a long time. 
They've been on the, the only reason they've been on the cusp of being good anytime they've ever been on the cusp of being good is because of Stafford. So it's, it's a win for the lions and, and, it's a it's a huge win for the Rams in my eyes. I mean, I think this is one of those. There's been so many bad trades, especially with the Texans involved the last little while, a couple of years, that there's been some pretty obvious winners and losers in some trades. And I think that there's, uh, to me, even as a Lions fan, um, I mean, it's gonna, without Stafford there, I'm pretty much going to be the jumping ship here soon. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it was Golden Stafford. And Cal- it was, it was from the get go with Stafford and Calvin Johnson and they were zero and 16 and I was just jumping on that bandwagon cause nobody was on it. I had, I could sit anywhere I wanted on the book, on the wagon. I was going to sit in the front, could sit in the back, sit on the right side, left side by the window. It was wide open. So I was like, this is a wide open wagon, pretty comfy. Um, but that the, sounds the like ride, a country song, man. The ride was too bumpy. I'm, I'm about to get off now that the lead conductor is gone, but I think it's a really good, is it, I, I feel like it's a really good trade for both teams. Yeah, I, I think it is also a strong deal for both teams. Um, no, who won? Who won uh, the trade? Fuck off. fuck off. Everyone's got to win something. Like, let's Tommy's just relax. better because he made the Super Bowl. How about both teams? You know, maybe maybe you could say the Lions, the Rams paid a little bit too much, but it we'll get to that lot, side in, but... in a second. But I think I think for both sides, it's good. You get, a, you get rid of that salary and you, the Lions are able to take it on. Um, you get pieces to be able to rebuild around Dan Campbell uh, got like a six year deal. So he doesn't need to be have feel the pressure to make something crazy happen right away. He can kind of let it all soak in, wash him, figure out an identity and what they want to do. Don't necessarily love Anthony Lynn as uh, the OC there, but you know, it is what it is for the Lions. They got, they got a lot of interesting holes to fill. There's no Galladay. He's a free agent. Marvin Jones is a free agent. Amendola is a free agent. Uh, Quentin Stephus is holding it down over there <laughs> as as the uh, lone wolf and obviously Hawkinson. And uh, I always get the Bryants confused. Is it Harrison or Hunter over there? It's Hunter, right? Hunter Bryant. They got a, they got a Bryant. Yeah, uh, Harrison they got, got a Browns. Bryant. They got a Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then Geronimo Allison's over there, and I don't know how the opt out works. Is he still on contract? Is he out of contract? Because he was only one year. Uh, red, shirt, red shirt. Red shirt. Is he red shirt? Okay. Uh, so it'd be interesting over there. They don't have a ton. Should should be, and obviously, you know, it's going to be shit. I mean, probably a decent amount of Dinkin and Duncan, probably a decent amount of pounding the rock with uh, Swift and Carry On, and maybe a little play action here and there. Anthony Lynn special. Uh, you know, Anthony Lynn likes to to pound the rock and, and play a little throwback football. Um, probably be two backs involved. Uh, so, I mean, shit, I don't think it's the worst move. And like you said, the Lions have been in purgatory for a long time. So at least this gives them a chance to start on the path to like, hey, let's start over and rebuild. And we're, they've just been one of those franchises forever, like the Browns that have been just – have a good year here and there every once in a great while, but then right back to just trash. And, and realistically, finally... let me th- realistically, Go like ahead. Stafford's kept them from having, for the most part, when he hasn't been hurt, he's kept them from having the really good draft picks. You know, they did, they did have a high draft pick. They took Sue years back and they took fairly years back up in the top of the draft. And Stafford got yeah, they hurt. They took a this, this, this past year. You know, they've, they've, they've been semi high pick. Yeah. I mean, not every single year, even with Stafford, right. they've been able to do anything. But, you know, just six and 10 will keep you out of the top five draft picks most of the time, you know. Um, so it's, it's a good chance for them. I mean, obviously, golf is a decent player. Um, some people showing their ignorance, saying it's got getting golf and Stafford pretty much the same and all that bullshit. Like, that's ridiculous. But, yeah, the, um, you know, I, mean, I, I think it's a good chance. The problem is now, and we can go to the other side of the football here, go to the side of the trade with the Rams, the opposite of this. The problem is now the Lions have to make a couple good couple picks because you blow this pick. How many times did the Browns get up in the top and blow right. pick after blow well, pick that's... after blow pick? You know, so well, the new GM is like, supposed to be like a so collegiate a, athlete picking genius, right? That would be great. Yeah, if so the that's Lions what I was don't blow at, these is... picks, then that it could be good. But if they blow the picks, who cares? You have you had the, the, the Browns forever. And finally they get in the right position and get the right people in there to, to lead this thing out of the, the muck and the mire and uh, the right coach. Finally, after they even tried to blow that for two years, uh, mm-hmm. the Browns 
Uh, so they seem like Stefanski and Baker are on the same page. They know how to use and get an identity for the parts and pieces that they have and build towards what they want to do, which is the lines have been fairly, uh, the only identity they've had is Matthew Stafford putting the whole damn team on their, on his back for the entire time he's been there. Uh, hurt, not hurt. Doesn't matter. He usually plays. Uh, he has to be really hurt not to play. Never, never blames anything on injury from the Stafford side of homes. You mentioned the, uh, the new GM, for the Lions, uh, interesting kind of combo platter there. First movie makes is trading for Jared Goff. I think he knew that they were in a con in a little bit of a situation there, and they could maybe get a guy and see w- see what they could get out of him in the next year or two, and then maybe shit, maybe Goff in the next year or two is cut from the Lions as well. They could be, you know, just kind of getting the the picks and taking the salary off the load. You see this in basketball, you know, taking that salary and and uh, burning it up, but. Brad Holmes is the GM. He's he was the Rams director of college scouting and evaluated golf coming out of Cal. Uh, so it ties back to Jared Goff with right. They picked uh, him over Carson once that year, and, and then yeah. really like golf. And then you know it, it's really tough for a new GM, new coaching staff to come in with no quarterback at all. So to get the two firsts down the line and uh, to get golf and also you know. And move on from Stafford is a pretty good move for the Lions. I mean, it was it was a lot to pay for the Rams, but definitely definitely kudos to the Lions for getting what they could. It's an interesting article on Sports Illustrated about the trade and how all the other team, you know, Washington was in the in the deal, and, and Carolina was going to give up uh, one eight. I don't know if you were going to get to any of that case. I don't want to jump ahead. No, but, no. Um, uh, but but the way the Rams are thinking is that it's going to be a later, you know later picks because they're trying to win now they've made it to the super bowl with golf they don't think they can win with golf and they want to get somebody better and um if if they end up being successful in those picks i guess there's like a jimmy johnson trade calculator or trade like uh value draft picks chart. draft Val- chart draft value chart yeah we need to make one of those for like moving rookie picks uh but two later first basically equate like to one eight in a point system um, so it ended up being like semi similar to what was already on the table. They threw in golf and, and that closed the deal for him. Um, should be interesting. I mean, it definitely sucks for golf. How, how, how sucky is it having to plan like moving to Detroit right now from Los Angeles? <laughs> like, Oh, that's a, uh, that's a bummer. Yeah. Spent his time at Cal and then now, now shipping to Detroit. And, uh, but you know, he, he was kind of sharing the sentiments of, you know, Somebody, they, they actually want me over here. Maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You could see in, a, in next year that maybe they cut his ass. But um, yeah, I think I think they're going to give golf a go. I don't. I, I was never a, a extreme golf hater. I think he's fine. I don't think he's a world beater. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm not going to hate on golf too too much. I think he could be just fine, surrounded by the right talent. He's not going to go out there and like you said the Rams were concerned about being able to win you a Super Bowl, but I don't, I don't think that's what the Lions were thinking by getting golf here is that we're going to win the Super Bowl. So no, I mean, he could, it's he definitely manage the shit until it's, it's definitely like stock down Jerry Goff. I mean, if, if, if you got him in fantasy, you're not super. Well, stock was always that. stock was shooting down. And so hopefully you unloaded him before this, but there could well, I mean, be a, decent had a, a good couple of years. And like you said, if we had just listened to Casey, like the first season of golf, everybody was throwing him in the trash, including me. And Casey was like, I don't think he's that bad. And if you would like listen to Casey bought a little low there, you'd have been good. And then he blew up. And then Casey was like, well, I don't know if he's that good. And then like if he had sold then when Casey's giving these little telltale signs, we'd have been we'd have kind of rode that wave uh, the correct way. And now it's now it's back down. Uh, well, I did. So we did sell dead, uh, collectively. We did own golf, and that was the only I'd sold. We sold him in Superflex uh, before the season was over. Midseason got uh, got some good stuff in that deal and uh, moved on. <laughs> he was our we third had. quarterback, and Casey and I were right. driving down the road. And Casey was like, "You sure about this?" He was like, "You you you want to get rid of golf?" I was like, "Get rid of him." <laughs> <laughs> get See you later. Rid of him. <laughs> but so now everyone's gonna really hate him. And it's like, I feel like there still could be some okay super flex value for, for golf to just kind of dink. Like I said, dink dunk. One of our uh, discord Patreon guys was kind of echoing the same sentiments. There you know, could be some dinking and dunking and some big plays here and there ride the running game a little bit. And uh, you know, just be able to have okay performances and, and a bailout, you know, quarterback for you and super flex. That's about to be super cheap. 
I think like that. So. Su- super cheap is definitely going to happen. Jared Goff is going to be buried in a startup super flex draft, and you got a good t- chance for mop up duty. Um, you got that. You got that fourth quarter fantasy points. Those those potential, for, you know, 10, 12 points coming in the in the fourth quarter because they're, they're probably going to be getting slaughtered. Um, so some prevent defenses make it a lot easier. Get down the field, get a couple of touchdowns. Um, yeah. get back within 15 safe. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to lean. I'm not drafting him as my, my definite QB two, but if I could throw no, him no, in no, there no. as my QB three or four in the mix, maybe have a couple of games, some spot duty, and maybe he has bounces back a little bit and you can get a little bit of value for him through somebody who's hurting a quarterback. Yeah. But we I came out of that startup this year. We didn't want Jared Goff to be our second quarterback and he was starting for the Rams. Right, so right. now you're going to a rebuild and lions teams would potentially looking like New England Patriots on the offensive side of the ball as far as weapons. So, yeah, I mean, you come out of that, yeah. come out of a startup this year and super flex with Jared Goff as your third or fourth uh, actual starting quarterback in the NFL. That That's not bad, but you don't want to come out with him as your two. Yeah. I mean, anything can right, happen. Well, he could be really good, but that's not that. Sure. That'd be, that that's your bonus. You want him to be as your QB three. Now you got big time trade trade bait on your bench. Exactly. All right, well, let's jump over to the other side. And uh, you, you touched on it for a second, uh, Big Cove, people saying how this is just like a slight, you may trade all this for a slight upgrade. Now, maybe maybe you can view it and say, hey, maybe they traded a little too much, but I'm never going to be mad at a team for making moves to try to improve, to go chase the overall goal, which is winning the fucking Super Bowl. And the Rams have not been gun shy in doing so. And they haven't made know, a single first round pick since McVay's been there. They've right. And has away. it mattered? Has it mattered? They've been good. Like right. it doesn't matter. Like they, the, their, their defense was built around other guys that they found in the draft these last couple of years and these later rounds and they coached them up and they did what you're supposed to do. Find guys that can fit your scheme and do different things. And they had one of the best up and coming defensive coordinators, obviously who just got a job uh, with the chargers there. But I, you know, we can get to Stafford in a second. The Rams, in my opinion, like, they're older. Aaron Donald, 30, you know, Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, uh, like late 20s. Robert Woods about to be 30. Cooper Cup's what, 28? Um, Whitworth. I mean, Andrew Whitworth, if he's playing again next year, could've, he's damn near 40. Can't be playing he could have retired again. twice already. Right. Right. But he loves playing and he loves the team and he loves he loves being in California. He's been on some. Uh, so, I mean, sure. How long do you have where everybody in the league is highly re- regarded as the or widely regarded as the best corner in the league? That window is not that big. Tlaib right now is that is in that Ramsey. window where pretty we're, sorry. Yeah. Ramsey. Tlaib? They had to leave. get your right. chain snatched. <laughs> Well, he was at one point regarded as, you know, but anyway, Ramsey regarded as one of the best corners in the game, bar none. He can basically take whoever you want out of the game. And and that, that also doesn't last all that long. Aaron Donald, damn near 30. And, you know, not that he won't be really good for a long time if he wants to be but the way he takes care of his body and the way he is, but like to be elite, elite game wrecker, how many more year, two, three, I don't know. I'm, mm-hmm. but good for them. Good for do for for pushing your chips in, getting a guy who can change your offense and change so many things. And if you're going to sit here and tell me that you think that Stafford is just a slight upgrade to Jared Goff, I I I'm calling you crazy because I you know I, I, don't, way, man. I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. I got. Yeah. I, 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 go ahead, Jay. I mean, just just reading that article and hearing hearing McVay talk about the fact that that Matthew Stafford processes things so quickly, and we talked about this, Casey, on the phone. Like, you know, maybe McVay doesn't want to have to be telling Jared Goff every single thing in his ear the whole time during the play clock while you get to talk to your quarterback. Like, maybe he'd like for the quarterback to read some things on his own and 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 take some control and and help ease all, all that up and and you know. Jared Goff's not the smartest dude ever. You know, he's got a good arm, and, and, and that scheme, it fit well. But Stafford's on a whole nother level. I mean, yes, the arm talent is pretty similar, but but just playing the position. I don't even know if the arm talent's similar. I mean, Goff no. has a cannon. No, absolutely not. No. Goff has a cannon. But he can't make Goff those weird angles. Cannon, but he, he can't make those Stafford weird has. angle throws and close. off balance and, and nope. falling back, sidearm. Yeah, he can't mm-hmm. do that. Golf, golf, and Stafford—two different arms. Yeah. What you got, Big Co? 
Well, it's just you got Stafford coming in to play for he's maybe he's not the boy genius anymore. Maybe he's the young man genius now. He's not quite as young as he used to be and making those waves with, you know, 28 year old head coach or whatever the heck he was. But like everything, and I think it'll be pretty easy to see. And it, yeah, it's not going to be fair to golf because he's going to rebuilding team and right. all new coach, new GM, new offensive coordinator, new everything. It's not going to be, and, and pr- maybe not any weapons because they're not going to want to pay anybody this year. It's not going to be fair to golf to be like, see, look how bad he is without McKay. Right. Well, but, but you know it, that's coming, and and because this is how this is, everything's got to be wins and losses. It can't, mm-hmm. and we got to look at it right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know that's coming. Yeah, good point. So, Continue. so it's not going to be fair to golf, and 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 probably like the first half of the first game, it's going to look decent because they're going to have everything so scripted because they know they're not going to be good. <laughs> but then it's going to the screws are going to come out. It's going to be bad. But like now, you're going to see the Stafford come in, and McVeigh's going to be able to take hit the the Shanahan, the Lafleur, the McVeigh system that just completely makes everything look the same. For the, from the defensive standpoint, what the defense is looking at, it, everything looks kind of the same, and then all of a sudden, this guy's got the ball over here, or this play-action boot looked like that, but now it's going this way. Now you give that man Stafford, and I think that offense is going to be, and obviously the Rams think that offense is going to go to a whole other level. And what's cool about this is the Rams did just give away their next two years first-round picks, and they're kind of going all in, but they went all in like two years ago, and they got to the Super Bowl, they had signed to leave. They had signed a couple other guys that, like, so, you know, later they signed. They signed some defensive guys, and they paid up in free agency to go all in. And a lot of times, when you see that, first of all, they usually don't make the playoff. They don't make the Super Bowl anyway. Um, and then when they do, um, it usually falls apart quickly. Mm-hmm. And this, I think, it's kind of cool that the Rams bring it. They, they, nobody has, especially after this year, but it really not last year either. But even after this year, it's just like Ramsey island out there nobody's looking back saying that was a bad trade for those first round picks yeah i can't believe they gave up two first rounds for jalen ramsey who said that this year that they gave up too much for jalen ramsey and right right, between him and aaron donald they were maybe the top two defense in the league for most of the season they were the number one defense in the league um so you had the best defense in the league because you gave up two first you, you first of all you you nailed it with aaron donald and then you you knew that you had something you had, like Casey said, you got the game record in Aaron Donald and why not bring in if the team that's just going, it's kind of like a, the lions, the Jaguars going down the toilet a couple of years ago. If you, they're, they're superstars and unha- unhappy, you, you throw in a couple first rounders. Well, yeah, we'll take Ramsey. How many teams miss out on their first round picks? We just talked about the Browns doing it every year, right. you know, every year. And for some the bad teams, they've five years in a row that, that how many times did we watch in a football game, especially on Monday night? Cause you get a chance to sit down and watch one game and the team, and they put up this graphic. It shows like the teams like last four first round picks and two of them are out of the league. Right. One of them's on another team already, or, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, who cares? Uh, obviously if you're hitting those picks, they're huge, they're huge picks, but so many teams get that wrong. So for them to go, you, you, you went and got Ramsey stud Ramsey Island. And now you just went and got Stafford, a team, a, a, a player, a, a quarterback in the league that in my opinion, obviously I'm a little bit of a biased guy here, but I mean, I think if you surround, I think we have never seen upside Matt Stafford. No. You know? And I think, I think obviously that's the, the next Rams place. O-line, Rams offensive line has, has a, a lot of improvement to do, but even, even the it play better action, this year, for the sure. scheme and the play action, I think McVay, McVay could do a lot. I mean, obviously he could do a lot more with Stafford than he could do with golf, but they, now that you've already gone in and got Stafford, I think that they're just going to zero in on that offensive line. Defense is right. great. Zero in on that offensive line and see what they can do. Yeah, I mean, you you said it there. Like Stafford's never really been surrounded by anything, and and there's a there's a couple of things I want to hit on that. I mean, he um, had Calvin for a while, but well, I mean, sure, but it was just Calvin. Yeah, like and look, Calvin retired because he was tired of being on the Lions. True. Like, like <laughs> Barry Barry Sanders was still good, retired because he was tired of being on the Lions. Like, this is this is just what it is. Like. I heard uh, Damian Woody and I've heard a couple other guys on some different podcasts. I think Damian Woody was on with Ryan Rosillo and they were just telling, he was telling stories and he was talking about how terrible the culture is in Detroit. Like he was in the Patriot, he was on the Patriots and he was on 
the Jets, and then he comes over to Detroit, and them boys are just good timing it over there. Like, there's no accountability for anything. They're just showing up whenever they feel like showing up. It's just like, it's a, he's just like, it was a mess. He was like, I could see immediately when I showed up here why this franchise is never any good. It was just like, it's just, it's like just how it's run from the top down. And I don't mm-hmm. think it's really changed very much since he's been around there, you know. So that, that there is part of the whole deal. It doesn't matter how good Matthew Stafford is. He's never going to overcome a situation like right. you put him on the Browns. He probably would have been exactly the same Matthew Stafford and been this because the culture and the situation was just so terrible. Um, you have then countless players after this has happened on. I've seen on interviews and on Twitter and all that just coming out and saying, People don't understand how good Matthew Stafford is and how much he does prepare and how much he loves this game and how he never misses a question on Jeopardy because he's fucking crazy smart. Like the dude yes, is just I, I saw some video or something. Somebody asked him like this math. I'm really good at numbers in my head. And he somebody asked him this math question that was ridiculous and he spit it out. And I was like, damn. Yeah, I, I was I would I didn't know where to start. It was like a big time. Not like he's one of those like mental processors where like it, it yeah. was a chalkboard in his head and he can yeah. write stuff down and then he can look at it in his mind. Like it was amazing. I was very impressed as so a numbers I, guy in I'll my head. Guy, and, uh, yeah, he I, blew, he blew me out of the water. I've seen again countless players just come out and say how crazy good this dude is and and how much you don't even understand how much he's been overcoming to put be as good as he is and put the lines in any sort of situation that they've been in um i know i've heard a lot of talking heads over the last couple days just just talk about how well you know there's a lot of talent there but there's a difference between being a talent and being able to like hey i've always heard stafford's so good well why doesn't equate in any wins it doesn't equate in any wins because the fucking lines like i said a million (laughs) times already have just been run like absolute dog shit yeah years and it really wasn't a couple years it was just a couple years ago there was one of those in the middle of a fourth quarter comeback and the graphic goes up on the, on the screen. It says Matthew Stafford leads all quarterbacks in fourth quarter game winning drives and yeah. comebacks since he came into the league. He's got 31 fourth quarter comebacks and 38 game winning drives. Yeah. Um, he's never had a run game ever. He's had like, I believe 11 games with a hundred yard rusher in that game in his career as a starter, like, and then yo. when's the last time you were like, oh, that Detroit defense, I'm scared of that thing. Like, yo, probably never. They've like, what are we talking about here? You you brought up that run game for the Lions, right? Uh, I went back and looked at like who the running back was, right? So starting from 2011, they've uh, only had one 1,000 yard rusher, and that was Reggie Bush. In that was his, that's Stafford's entire career. He has only right. had 1,000 yard rusher. Honestly. In 2011, there was J- Javid Best. Then it was Mikel Lashore. Then Reggie in 13. Both of those guys. <laughs> Joy Bell. Amir Abdullah had it for 15. Uh, Theo Riddick in 2016 led the team in rushing. 17 and 18, pour one out for our boy Carry On. RIP. Um, and then in 2019, Adrian Peterson led the team with 604 yards. And so like several of those years, they were dead last in rushing. And I just kept going back, looking at overall team rushing statistics and they're in the bottom barrel half of the league every single year. And you want to know why they don't win is because they can't rush the ball. He's never had. They can't do anything. They can't do anything. The Lions were 0 and 3 in the span of, of 10 years with Stafford uh, or 12 years, I guess. In the, in the playoffs, right? Stafford's never been to the playoffs. Um, and I thought that he was, like, injury prone, which he does get a little banged up. But, like, you mentioned, Casey, he, he plays through that. And nine out of the last ten years, he's played all 16 games. Um, granted, he went out, like, after the first drive in week 16. <laughs> Yeah, I think he broke his collarbone his rookie season or something, and he missed. He, um, he only played three games his second year. I know that, um, and I think he was. only played ten games his first year, and then after that, it was just every single year. And I want yeah. to say one more thing: like kudos, shout out to the Lions for trading Stafford to somewhere he wanted to go, which the Rams was one of like three teams that he was cool getting <laughs> traded, and he doesn't have a no trade clause, so they could have been like, whatever, man, we're getting as much as we can for you, but they respected him and, and wanted to do right by him and send him somewhere. That uh, wanted him. Well, I don't think yeah. anybody else so. is going to pay as much as the Rams because of the uh, the golf contract. Um, that was like 
you know, it's everywhere. It's on all talk radio. You can't get away from it. Like the golf contract was bad and it was going to weigh the Rams down, but right. because the lions took it, that was part of the reason why they got as much as they did. And that good for the lions to, to execute and get it done and good for the Rams to find some, a trade partner. Um, yeah. you know, that, I mean, I don't know if there's enough, obviously Deshaun Watson is 25 years old and he's out there potentially as a trade bait guy and good for the Rams to this is it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad I got here because I wanted to say this and then I forgot and then just happened to come around and, and normal conversation but like the Rams were trying to make an upgrade right the Rams wanted to go out and get Stafford but the Rams were like mm, maybe before we go and shoot all this over there to the lions. Let's make sure we can't get Aaron Rodgers first. Right. <laughs> yeah. So like, that's what I talk about all the time when you're making trade, if you're about to send out this blockbuster offer for X, Y, Z, you know, obviously this year's, if you're going to go trade for Zeke, right. You got to offer that for, you got to offer that for Chris McCaffrey first. You got to send that offer out for Saquon Barkley first, right? The guys that would be above there. You got to make sure that you couldn't have got that Can't better player. Other guys, yeah. With what you're offering, you got to. If you're like, you got to work your way to where you want to be, and, and maybe you got lucky along the way. So good for the Rams for knocking on that door, making sure Dave Rodge wasn't available. Yeah, and That's I mean, very now, smart of the Packers to say no. The, the, the Rams, like, nah, Sean, come on, Doug. <laughs> the Rams are now third in odds to win the Super Bowl in 2022. Um, so that's just obviously they were probably reasonably high to begin with, but I think Stafford going on there. I think you're crazy if you don't think this is a great upgrade for the Rams. I think this was a win for both sides. Obviously, you could say it was a little expensive, but I mean, Bobby Woods is has got to be psyched. This run game's got to be psyched. And Mick, you talked you touched on it for a second, Big Co. Like the fact that McVeigh can now sit back, let out a just a big deep breath of like, Oh, now I can really like unlock a lot other things that I really want to do and start adding in and doing all these different things and not have to be, you know, cut off in the middle of a sentence on my fifth one, the 15 seconds is down to uh, in the quarterback's headset and it just he's cuts like, off or whatever. And he's like the sun sets in the West. The sun sets in the West here. <laughs> You're going to throw this one too. <laughs> And then the 15 seconds, he's, like, yeah. he's looking over to the sideline. Like, oh, like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> give, give me some numbers you're throwing. <laughs> yeah, in. yeah. 17 so, or 12. I think values up all around for all those guys um, in the Rams organization. Value up on Matt Stafford. Probably going to see a, a bump in some super flex action. Although Stafford's always been pretty good. He's always he's somewhat of a discount, of, though, and probably not anymore, though. One of eight quarterbacks uh, to pass for 5,000 yards in a season. Uh, he's just got all sorts of silly stats. He's he's ridiculous. I think he's going to absolutely crush and not have to be everything for this team. Be able to lean on a run game and some defense and, and hey, all right, hey, oh, this is – you're going to make this a little easier for me? Like, whilst being able to make decisions on my own, like, hey, sometimes we're just going to run this play and we know where it's it's going here or it's going here. And this the play design in itself is so innovative and good and all of our shit looks the same that it's really hard to scheme against. So, I mean, I just – I think it's fantastic for the Rams. Um, I think they're going to crush. Uh, I just, yeah, I mean, McVay just went and got like – he has got three or four pages of playbook that was tucked in the back that he couldn't even call those play calls. And now you got to think if when, you know, when football happens and you get that muff pun or that fumble pick to the house, something like that, now the Rams can come back from when, when they're down, right? Yeah. Like the, the Rams, their whole – philosophy right now is let's keep it close or those play from with the lead who doesn't want to play with the lead but when something happens and jared well, golf was down by 10 points it was you never had any confidence that's that, where they you know so now you get matt and stafford over there and when when football happens and you're down 14 to nothing in the first quarter and you're like well how the hell did that happened is the game still wide open i believe mcveigh's undefeated when leading at halftime it's a good stat and it probably could be i think it's something crazy like that and, you know, just to further hammer home your point of like, you know, hey, the Rams are good and you get a lead and it's hard to come back on them because, but, you know, when you're down, you're thinking, oh, shit. And I am really tired of them saying, well, you know, the writing was on the wall when they benched golf for Walford in that game against uh, Seattle or whatever it was when or whoever the first. Yeah, Seattle. Yeah, and I'm Seattle. like, did you see when golf had to come in? 
or yeah. whenever he played, like he could barely fucking throw the ball. Like what? there wasn't a, there wasn't much of a decision to be made here. Like I get it. Y'all boys, they probably did want to move on from golf. They had lost confidence in him. He had a decent first half of the season. And at some point he just kind of started regressing a little bit and seemed like him and McVay were just maybe a little at odds. And, you know, golf couldn't, could hardly grip a football. He was his at finger, every his, his fifth, thumb was dangling off, man. He, made, third, he, had, he had to make one throw at the end of the game, and he, and he made it to a wide open receiver. Yeah, luckily, but I mean, yeah. he, it took everything he had to get that ball about eighteen yards in the back corner of the end zone. Yeah, and the next game, I don't think he played awful against the Packers. Like the defense wasn't very good against the Packers. Like not many defenses are. So, but next year, though, maybe not first half of the season. But back half of the season, when the Rams start clicking on offense, you could potentially see some Aaron Rodgers esque type flow out of this offense. Yeah, and I, Stafford's going to be back in the top ten realm of quarterbacks, probably. Completely agree. Go get you some Van Jefferson, baby. Hope you sold that guy. Hope you sold Van Jefferson. I'll be nothing. getting anything I can for him right now. <laughs> <laughs> could, could equal out to be nothing, but if you if you're not excited for the whole upgrade on the offense and being able to, if you're worried about being able to distribute enough things out, like enough targets out, Stafford could be your guy. Anyway. Stock up Rams, let's go. Great for Cam makers. Los Angeles sure. Rams, let's go. All right, boys. Hey, thanks for joining us, everyone. If you're listening on the podcast, do us a favor. Go over you oh, go go over to YouTube. Hit subscribe. Leave us a comment. The tubes. We'd appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll be back probably with some more rookie talk. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Most likely. We're about to get some some new uh, ADP here at DLF. So uh, we'll be doing another one of those DLF reviews, trying to keep those flowing every month. Uh, Just to keep you aware of who's where in the the top 50-ish and then some outliers that got some good value all right boys all right everybody peace